Hi, so this is kind of a follow-on to um, the saltwater generation video that I did and here's the waterproof ink. I've obviously uh, potted it up now and put on little labels because uh, I've made a load of this for my Indiegogo supporters and um, when that gets out to them then I'll probably think about making some more and putting up for general soil. But this is really just going to Indiegogo supporters at the moment. Um, so there's the waterproof ink and I painted this piece of plastic with it so that I could do the salt water uh, generation test with it. Now um, in the video there's an awful lot that I didn't tell you mostly because it was a hey wow look at this and it was kind of fun but this material is um, anisotropic that is it has better conduction properties in this direction than it does in that direction and that's because of the way it was applied it was applied with the brush up and down and that up and down application and the way that I kneeled it up and down made sure that the properties were anisotropic. The ink is inherently anisotropic, incidentally, but that makes sure that those properties are, um, are there. Now, anisotropic materials have some really interesting properties to them. One being, um, if you apply heat difference across an anisotropic material, what you do is you get um, electricity generation. And this is one of the properties of all Peltier devices. It's one of the reasons Peltier devices work. And there's a whole new set of thin film pe um, Peltier devices based on exactly that property. Um, and probably the salt water generation has something to do with that property. That is, when the ions are being transported from one, um, one part of the drop to another part of the drop, then they have favorable condu uh, conduction in this direction and extremely unfavorable in that direction. So it effectively isolates the water drop and the salt content to any particular point on that film. So if my drop is here, then because it won't conduct particularly successfully in that direction, it has to go up and down. And so obviously I connected my electrodes here and here, and the anisotropic nature of this material, the way the water was running down it, meant that it had to conduct in that direction, which is probably one of the reasons um, that it was so successful in doing that. But, as I say, one thing that's really interesting to note is that um, if you put a heat difference across anisotropic materials, you will get a voltage generation. So, somebody wrote to me and said, hey, that's really interesting, why don't you give that a go? So what we've got here is a beaker full of just boiled water, and I've obviously just connected the electrodes up to my material, and let's drop it in there. And look at that. <laughs> We're getting voltage generation on that material um, just uh, because there's a temperature difference between the top and the bottom. Because you would kind of expect that with an anisotropic material, you really would. Um, but it works with this one too. That's extremely cool. I'm, I'm really quite pleased about that. Now obviously we're measuring voltage and uh, what we really need to do is measure power generation. And so we need to do some stuff on um, how many amps this is outputting. Now, this is early proof of concept stuff. Really, what I'm doing here is exploring this potential of this material. What can this material do? And um, there is obviously a hundred ways to go with it. Thermal generation, salt water generation, just being two fine examples. So I will get on to the amperage readings, but I'm sure you can understand there's a lot to do with this new material. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the follow-up, and thank you very much for watching.